Are you ready to um, have people eager to buy your product? You've been working on your product. Are you ready for people to be eager to buy it? And are you ready to simplify the sales page creation process? Um, I was talking to a colleague the other day who has uh, created tons of sales pages, been in the business for years, better at sales pages than I am, and she was having anxiety about creating her sales page. And um, it was like a pre-anxiety. And she told me she gets that way every time. Every time when she gets to the sales page, she has like almost a little mini panic attack. And then, you know, she creates the sales page. So um, I just thought that was kind of interesting. So, you're, you know, whether you're new or you've been in a in business for a lot of years, there's always a little bit of something that comes up when it comes to actually creating the sales page for your project, for your product. And, and that may be just normal, you know, to feel that way because now it's become real and you've got to convey that. And, um, and a lot of people don't feel all that comfortable with sales. So it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be a big panic attack. You can have a set formula that would help you at least get the, the guts of the sales page done. And then if you want to expand from there, you're totally welcome to. So welcome back to how to create virtual products and programs. And this segment is on creating sales pages that sell. So a big shout out today to Lisa Ray Preston of stepintodestiny.com, some of her um, core uh, communication style uh, theory went into this segment of the training, um, as well as just Lisa has tutored me for a lot of years in sales page creation. She's a professional copywriter and she knows how to you know, write copy to the voice of your audience. and and how to structure sales pages, and she's just taught me an immense amount about sales pages. So big thanks to Lisa Ray Preston. And then Nancy Marmalejo of uh, nancymarmalejo.com is, you'll find some of her material in here as well, and I'll, you'll see where that is. So today what you're going to receive are the templates for your sales page, your emails, and your thank you pages. And you're going to learn how to craft a compelling sales page. You're also going to get a sales page creation checklist so you make sure you're covering all your bases. So first, when you're going to create your sales page, you want to gather up all your materials. So first you're going to need the name of your product, which hopefully you, I think everybody on the call has the name of their product. And you need to know who you're speaking to, which you know because you've done your ideal audience. And in the research on your ideal audience, hopefully you have discovered their problems, their feelings, their challenges. All of this is going to come into play today for your sales page. Now, with any product or program, it's always a good idea to add a few goodies. Um, I'm not a big believer in tons of bonuses. Um, if I look at a program and it's what I want and then they start rattling off, you know, five, ten bonuses of different things, I just get overwhelmed. I, it's like, I'm doing good to digest what you were trying to sell me. Don't sell me any, you I mean, know, oh, don't try to get me to um, look at all these bonuses too. That just, I don't know, for me it's just information overload. That used to be a pattern of the past to add just tons of bonuses. But what you want to do, instead of calling them bonuses probably, um, they're benefits of your program. And, and there's things that you can add that will beef up your program and make it have more value. Uh, worksheets, for example, like I've given you the worksheets to go through with this program. Handouts that recap the material. Um, your handouts could be the slide presentation where they, and a place for notes. Resource lists can be helpful, like where to go next. Um, like for this, uh, anytime I do this training or some of the others, I usually get people who will say, well, do you know anybody who can do websites? Do you know anybody who could um, do this or that, and th those would be smart for me probably to just put in a resource list and hand to you. Um, I do that in like in my Create a Wild book program. I give my Rolodex of people that you can, can go to for graphic design or book cover design or 
editing or you know whatnot. You could have some how-to videos to explain the things that you're not maybe uh, training on in a live presentation. So if somebody wanted to know how to do something specifically, you could create some how-to videos to supplement the material. You can have checklists to make sure that people know what order to do things in and kind of recap for them. That's a lot of times when you deliver a lot of material, people get overwhelmed, and if you break it down into a checklist, uh, that it's just makes it simpler for them. Templates, like we've done in this class. You could have journal pages to help them th think through and apply what you're teaching them. You could have meditation audios to go in conjunction with your program. I do a meditation audio with my How to Create Your Amazing Life because it helps them connect to God and, and kind of co-create what they want for their lives so that it fits with the program. It's not like some bonus I'm offering that doesn't even relate or something like that. All of these things should tightly relate to your program and make your program more implementable, something that's going to make them actually do something with your program rather than just bonuses off to the side that come, don't even relate or are only loosely related. You could also offer a bonus Q&A session. Uh, for example, in a few weeks, we'll have a follow-up uh, Q&A session, live one-on-one -on -one session that you can come to and get help. You know, So if you've worked on your stuff over the next couple weeks and you have new questions, you can come and do that. So that's one of the things I included with this class, a bonus Q&A session. OK. So, the main thing that you want to do with um, your um, sales pages is to, to know the difference between features and benefits. And this is something I know Lisa has told me that almost all of her clients that she works with, they don't know the difference between features and benefits. And I didn't know them either until Lisa drilled it in my head over <laughs> a few years of looking at my sales pages. I finally um, understood it. So hopefully I can explain it to you here where you can get a better feel of the difference between features and benefits. OK, so some possible features for your program might be a private Facebook group, that there are going to be recordings available, that you have checklists, that you have templates. OK, those are features. Those are things that you're offering. But they're not benefits until you explain why they're important. So, for example, the private Facebook group, the benefit is you're not alone. You have a support community there to help you every step of the way. Okay, you're not going to get stuck. You're going to get help. You're going to be supported. Okay, so that's the benefit. With the recordings being available, the main benefit is you're never going to miss a thing. If something comes up and you miss a session, no worries. Recordings are available, and it's handy for reviewing material after the class. So you're telling them why. It's basically like you're answering, you're answering the question why. Why is this important? It, for everything that you're going to include in your program, ask yourself, why is this important? What's it going to do to make the student's life easier or the customer's life easier? How is it going to help them implement the material? Okay, the checklist, the benefit might be keep your momentum going by always knowing what to do next. You're never going to get lost. You know, just refer to my handy checklist. And then the templates could be it's cutting your development time in half by using my handy templates that you can adapt and make your own. So it's the, the benefit is the time savings and knowing what to do and not getting lost. And so those, hopefully this is clearing things up a little bit for you. And you want to focus on benefits in the sales page and talk about it rather than the feature. It's sort of like the feature is the wrench, and the benefit is you're getting your sink fixed. So we're back to our analogy there. OK, so your sales letter, there's different options for how you can do sales letter. And, and I'm sure there's more than the ones I'm offering here. I'm just giving you a few that are most common, OK, so that you can get a feel for how you might want to do yours. Excuse me. 
Okay, so option one is the, what I call a question method. And it starts off with, um, are you feeling? Are you feeling this or that? Um, this is where those feelings that you got researched in your ideal audience profile are going to come in. You connect with what they're feeling. Or are you suffering from? You describe their challenges. Um, start asking them questions that hit their pain points and um, that they're going to say, yeah, I am dealing with that, or yeah, I'm dealing with that, or that, that they're going to be um, qualifying your audience in a way based on are they having the problem that you're going to solve. And then you present your solution. And then you list the benefits that they can expect from implementing your product or your solution. So let's give you an example of this one. Uh, attention successful career women. So we're using the attention line to identify who we're talking to. Banish your burnout and your blahs and put the zest back into your life and career. And it starts with, are you succeeding in some areas of your life and career but feeling out of sync in others? Would you like to leave a legacy, make an impact, bring your life into harmony in all areas? Perhaps your career is doing fairly well, but you're losing interest or feeling burnout. You're questioning whether you're good enough to maintain the success. You're suffering from a bit of the imposter syndrome because you know your, your own flaws and feel out of alignment. So it's going through, you're feeling this, you're feeling that. So we're connecting with the feelings and the problem right up front. Okay, so that's an example of that one. Here's another one. Um, are you in the process of writing a book but feel like it's missing that wow factor that makes people exclaim, you've got to read this book? And then I've got my solution to create a wow book program, you know, receive the full training. And then down in here in the um, questioning, I'm using that are you question method there. Are you struggling to fill in the gaps in your draft? Have you been getting that gnawing feeling that something is missing? You know, that wow factor that will reach out and engage people and have them want your book now. Are you hoping your book will position you as a thought leader but wondering how to really build a following with it and so on. So the question is pulling them in. Hopefully they're saying yes, they have this problem or yes, they want to do this and then you're going to offer your solution below that. The second option is Nancy Marmalejo's love-hate method. I think she might have a cuter name for it than that, but <laughs> I've, I saw her do this one on the video and I thought it was great. So she starts with what I love is, what upsets me is, and that's why I put together this product or this service, or that's why I'm working with people on this. You can use Nancy's method on sales pages, on elevator speeches, on, um, you know, what, how you introduce yourself and your bio, uh, all kinds of places you can use this. It's a really great way, you know, when people ask you, what do you do? You say, you know, I really love working with people who do this, but what upsets me is that they're struggling with that, and that's why I help them do X, Y, Z. So you could use it just in explaining who you are and what you do. Okay, here's an example of that one. We've got the attention line, entrepreneurs with a heart to help but who feel stuck or blocked. Bust through fear, overwhelming feelings and chaos to impact lives and step into your own abundant life. Now this one, uh, got, I love working with entrepreneurs with something positive and powerful to share with the others. I get excited helping them put their work into the world knowing it will impact lives, thousands of lives for good. So there's the I love statement. And then what upsets me is seeing these people with so much to offer stuck behind a wall of fear, self-doubt, overwhelm, feelings and overwhelming feelings and limitations that don't have to st stand in their way. And then so and then I, I've, I go into a little bit more of what they're dealing with and then I offer my solution. So there's an example. We've got the love, what upsets me, and then and then that's, this is why kind of thing down in the lower. The third option is the story method. You can ask a pointed question that hits the heart of the problem. And then you can share your story of how you overcome the problem. 
So here's one. Is excess weight and lack of energy robbing you of your dreams? I'm three-fourths of the person I used to be, how I went from 195 to 141 pounds. And then um, I've got, you know, your, effect, your weight affects every interaction you have with yourself, kind of engaging with them there, getting them to see how the weight is affecting them. And then I go into maybe you're like I was, a stress eater who wasn't sure exactly when the weight crept on. One day I had some photos taken at an event and exclaimed, yuck, how did I get this fat? And then I just kind of go into this story, okay? So it's my story of what happened to me, and then I present my solution. So that one, again, is to ask the pointed question and then share the story of how you did it. Okay, so I've given you a bare bone sales page template. Now, sales pages can be really long. I mean, I've seen, I mean, Lisa will write these 20-page sales letters or something sometimes, you know, and they answer every question the person would ever have. And, um, and that's okay to do that. I'm not really into big, long sales pages, but she says they work. But, and the reason why they, they do the big, long sales pages is so that every possible objection that the person might have is somewhere on that page, that if they will take the time to read it, they're going to see it. The thing of it is, is I don't think people take the time to read it. Now, Lisa will print them all out and really read. Before she buys something, if it's a 20, 30-page sales page, she'll print that thing out and she will <laughs> read it all over what it is. Now, I'm not that way. When I see a sales page, I read the headlines, I read the main bulleted points, I uh, see if it's something I want, you know, is this engaging to me. I go down to the bottom, I look at the price, <laughs> I come back up and I look at testimonials, and if it's people that I know or, you know, something like that, that that's a perk. So I just skim, I just skim headlines, and you've got to, I think the bulk of people on the planet are skimmers these days or on information overload. So while you might include more information, that doesn't mean they're going to read it all. So this template is bare bones. It's not for big, huge, fleshed out sales pages. But you can take this and expand upon it and make it like that if you like that kind or if you think your program warrants it. In general, the bigger, I mean, the higher the price product, the longer the sales page because you got to cover all your bases. So here's how it goes. You've got attention, and you can choose the audience who has what problem. Okay, so in, like the ones that I showed you before, we attention entrepreneurial women who are suffering from burnout or whatever. <clears throat> and then you have your main benefit-laden headline and how-to ones work really well. You know, how to do this or that, how to do that. And then you, here you'd have your engaging questions. Are you or do you or would you to kind of engage them in the process. And then you introduce yourself. You know, I'm Arnie Pearson, and this is a bit of my story and why I relate to you and how I solved some of the problems you have. So, I mean, you wouldn't say it exactly that way. You're going to tell your story and how it relates to them and how you solve the problem. You're going to share that there. So don't, don't literally put that line, you know, you'll adapt that. Where I have things in bracket, you're going to customize it for yours. So these are the problems I see um, if we were doing entrepreneurial women experience. And you don't have to word that exactly that way either, you know. Um, you could say in my 25 years of working with entrepreneurs, I see that they typically deal with, you know, fear of success, fear of failure, you know, you know, I go through the problems, okay? So you then you outline the problem, and you don't use the word problem one here, problem two. I've had some people fill it out and do that. You're going to replace this with the name of the problem. So if problem one was fear of failure, and then I would put fear of failure there, colon, and tell a little bit about that. Or if it was fear of success, I'd put that down in problem two, and, with the, and then tell a little bit about that and how it's adversely affecting them and so on. Now, this bolding here is for a reason. You can you bold every other line if it's um, like a short, um, short information. Let me see if I can find you an example of that. 
Okay, so in this one, see that line's bolded, there's no bolding here, then that's bolded, and then no bolding there. So it breaks up the copy and it makes it easier to read. And you might even rearrange your benefits so that the bolded ones are, or your questions, the ones that are most important, you would bold. So you might play with it, the order. See this one, I bolded every other line as well. Now that one's kind of a long line, so I didn't even actually bold the whole thing, but I at least bolded the part I wanted, you know, the main part. So the bolding is really important. It helps with the breaking things up. Okay, and then you introduce your product. This is why I've developed my XYZ product, you know. And when you participate in this exclusive training, you'll receive... Now, in the place of the benefits, you're going to put um, things like we discussed earlier on the benefit chart. And then you do which looks like this feature or that feature. Okay, so let me see if I give you the, I can't remember if I got a, yeah, okay, good, I got an example coming up. <laughs> okay, so we'll give you an example of that in a second. And then you explain when and where and how the information is going to be delivered. So all of that could be delivered in paragraphs, you know. If it was a, a six-module program, you could outline module one covers this, module two. Name your modules so that they know what they're going to get in each one and create, um, flesh all that out right here on how it's going to be delivered. And this might be for you if, and that's where you could, if you want to, it's optional there, you could put some qualifiers like we discussed, um, things that would make them realize it's for them or not for them. Then you can include some tes testimonials. You have your call to action. You could give a regular price and strike, strike it through and, and then put in the, the price there on the investment through a specific date if you want to do a, like an introductory special through a specific date and then a buy button and then if you have a guarantee you can include that. So let's give you some examples of this stuff here. Okay, benefits example. So in this one the benefit is get your book done faster and then I tell them how they're going to do it. Okay, so they're going to connect with a mentor and a community that keeps them on task and supports them. Um, talks a little bit about how it can be lonely and you need the support system. Okay, so you're going to get it done faster with the support. You're going to get inside the heads of your exact readers so you can touch their hearts and create raving fans who share your book. You're going to craft a page turner, and when people find a book they can't put down, they're much more likely to share it with others. Successful books largely come from word of mouth, so the more word of mouth you can get, the better. Add professionalism and credibility. You're going to gather joint venture partners from the get-go, and you're going to maintain momentum on your book. So outlining the benefits that they're going to get and then giving them a little bit of maybe the how they're going to do it. Not every one of these has the how, but you can put that in there. And the who is it for section, which is optional, here's an example from the Create a Wild Book program. So I ha actually have a headline, who is this program for? Um, this program would be an ideal fit, ideal fit for you if you're thinking of writing a nonfiction book in the midst of writing a nonfiction book have your book almost finished and just need to add finishing touches, and you want to use your book to attract more joint venture speaking engagements and forward your movement. Now, this is a sneaky way of adding another benefit <laughs> down the bottom, okay? Um, I'm telling them what they're going to get to do. You know, they're going to attract more joint venture speaking engagements and forward their movement. Those are benefits, but I put them in, you know, if you want these benefits, you're going to, this program's for you. So it's another way to, to re-emphasize the benefits. Okay, so let's stop right there before we get into the mechanics of how to organize all your pages and everything. I'm going to open back up the lines because I've got them muted. Okay, so any questions so far or comments?
making sense? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. I'll assume there's no questions, and we'll get back at it. Okay, so the mechanics of um, the sales page, getting people to buy, I'm going to give it to you again in the order that you create these pages, and I'm going to show you a couple versions of how to do this. If you're using a shopping cart of some kind, like one shopping cart, or I don't know, there's other shopping carts, uh, I doubt you're using Infusionsoft at this point. I would not recommend anybody new use Infusionsoft. It's way overkill and expensive. So. But this would be the order of how you create things. You would create your thank you page first. So begin with the end. That's the page they're going to land on to have the product delivered to them. If it's a pre-recorded product of some kind or there's handouts or whatever, that all of the stuff's going to be on that page. If it's a live training, you're going to have your um, access details on this page. And then you're going to create the autoresponder campaign. Your buyers are going to go in a separate list than um, like your main, say your main newsletter list or even the preview presentation. They're going to go in a completely different list. And I get a lot of questions on why is that way. But you, you've got to be able to email your customers. You've got to tell them, remind them of when the call is and where to go to get the downloads. And, and you don't want to be sending that out to everybody. You only want to send it to the people who bought it. So you need them on a private list that's only going to get stuff about the, the product that they purchased. So you need a list campaign inside your autoresponder. And then you create a thank you email that they're going to get after they buy. And you would load that into your autoresponder. So um, that's what they're going to get that you give the autoresponder to send out whenever they get subscribed to your list. And then you're going to create your product in the shopping cart. So if you were using one shopping cart, there's a way to create the product in there. And you tie the autoresponder auto you created is tied to the product. Like in one shopping cart, it knows that when somebody buys this product, it sends this autoresponder. And then you create a sales page. OK, so that would be the order you would create this in. And on the sales page, you're going to put a buy button, which would come from the shopping cart. They give you code, and you put that code on the sales page. So with a shopping cart, all your stuff's kind of inclusive. Your autoresponders generally in the shopping cart. Your product's in the shopping cart. Your buy button comes from the shopping cart. And the thank you email, of course, is in that autoresponder that's in the shopping cart. So it's, all, it's a one solution option. If you don't have a shopping cart, I'll tell you how to do it in a minute. But um, OK, so I'm going to give you some templates for your, like your thank you page. So it might be something like, you know, thank you for purchasing the name of the product. Please put the following date and time on your calendar. Also, please bookmark this page. I'll be posting the recordings of the training here after each session. So it's just a simple thing. If you have more stuff you want to give them, it would go on that page. Maybe if you had a Facebook group, you could put the link to the Facebook group and tell them to join it. And then you have a template for your thank you email that goes in the autoresponder. And it's, you know, like, hi, your first name. Thank you for purchasing the product. I'm excited to share this important information with you. For full details on attending each session and to receive recordings and handouts, please be sure to bookmark this page. And then you give them the page. If it was a pre-recorded product, you, you just adjust this text and say, to receive all the, all the materials for the program, bookmark this page. And then close it up with your signature. OK, now if you don't have a shopping cart, uh, let's say you're just using PayPal. PayPal's free to use. You just pay on the transactions. Um, so it's a, 
it's a good way to go if you're new and you don't want to incur a lot of expenses starting out. So you could use PayPal and some autoresponder like Aweber or MailChimp or something like that. So here's an alternative method if you don't have the shopping cart with the one-stop solution. You create your thank you page, just like we did. This is your download page, That this page here. Okay, you create that page. And then you create an autoresponder campaign. Again, it needs to be specific to just the buyers of this program. And most likely, if you're going to be delivering this multiple times, it's an autoresponder unique to this delivery of the program because it's going to have the dates and things associated with this program. And then you create your thank you email. So that's that. <laughs> your thank you email. And then you're going to create a buyer list sign up page. Okay, so this is a page that they're going to go to before they hit the thank you page. Right after they buy, you're going to send them to a page that adds them to a buyer list. Okay, and it'll ask them to, you know, to, to re receive your information on the program, you know, um, fill out this form and you're going to get the information. Okay, so I'll give you an example of that in a second. And then you're going to create a PayPal Buy button, and that's just under the Merchant Options in PayPal. You can create buttons in there. Then you create your sales page, and you put the PayPal Buy button on the page. So we have this extra step here, this Buy List Sign Up page is the main thing that's extra because we've got to bridge um, the person from buying to getting on a list. And you could probably have something programmed. I've noticed if I buy things on um, ClickBank, for example, which is kind of a shopping cart affiliate program type thing but doesn't have an autoresponder with it, they've got some kind of thing that will interface with Aweber to put me on the list. The problem is that I've purchased at least twice and not gotten added to the list at all, and, and then I can't even contact the people to get added to it, and it, it's a real pain. So their process, there's a bug in it. If, if Aweber doesn't like your email for some reason that you used, it'll, it's, it's problematic, so I don't really like their solution. But there could be other ways to automatically feed the person into the list, but I'm just going to show you a little bit more manual way that anybody could do. So um, here's the PayPal with autoresponder alternative. So this is a template for that buyer list sign-up page, and they get this after they buy. And you're going to only use it if you're using something like PayPal with a list program. So thank you for purchasing the product. Important. In order to receive details on attending the sessions along with the handouts and recordings, please be sure to sign up for student updates below and then put the form from the autoresponder for them to sign up to your list here. Select their name and email. I wouldn't ask for more than the name and email here. And then always give them some way to contact you. This is so annoying to me to buy something and have no way to contact somebody if their system is buggy or it doesn't like my email or whatever. So if you have any trouble getting signed up for the list or have questions, please contact me. Give them your email. Give them your phone number, whatever to some way to contact you if there's a problem. Because if you use PayPal, there's a couple things you need to know. Sometimes people don't get sent to the thank you page at all. Okay, um, They either don't wait the five seconds that PayPal has them wait, or their browser doesn't forward. So they end up just like staying somewhere out on PayPal, and they would never get to this page. And because they never got to this page, you don't know that they've bought anything unless you um, get the PayPal I mean, notification. And they, <laughs> you have to little, do a little hand-holding with PayPal, OK? What I always do is um, I 
manually email everyone who buys. Even one shopping cart, I do it afterwards. I, and I double check. I just want to make sure that you got the download page because autoresponders, things that go automatically in today's age with the way they filter emails and stuff, you just can't count that they're going to be delivered. But personally sent emails tend to go through a lot better. So I always follow up with an email and say, thank you, just want to make sure you got this. Here it is. Um, I just think it's good practice to do that. Um, all right. Um, see if there's anything else I want to tell you on this one. So after they filled out this form here to be on the autoresponder, they're going to go to your thank you page at that point. The thank you page that has like the access details or anything to download or whatever. So you have this interim step of where they're having to get on your autoresponder before they can get the product. So all the more reason to definitely follow up with them. Uh, another thing I want you to be aware of with PayPal, it ha doesn't happen as often as it used to, but there have been times when I get orders at PayPal and I don't get an email notification from them. So periodically go into your PayPal and see if you've got orders. Just to be on the safe side, check it daily, make sure, see if you got orders. And people are impatient now. We expect stuff instantly. If it's virtual, we expect to get it now. So don't wait. I mean, I check my emails quite frequently throughout the day and try to follow up on orders. Or if you have a virtual assistant, have them help you with that. Um, just because people, if they buy something they can't get hold of somebody, they're really going to get antsy about it. So even if you've got to put a direct email to you on this page or give them a phone if you've got somebody to answer the phones, um, you know, another option might be to create some kind of, um, there's got to be some kind of Google text or some, some kind of text thing where you could have a special text that they could send. Uh, you know, send us a text here if you're having trouble with your order, you know, and have it forward to you so it's not really your text. Wouldn't want to give them your personal cell phone to text, but there's probably some forwarding type text message thing. I, I, anyway, I know there's stuff like that, so you might use something like that as an option. Um, okay. So any questions, I'm going to open this up and see if you've got some. Hi, Marnie. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm pretty new here. So how do I install a PayPal button to start with? For the beginning, I'll be using PayPal, and then afterwards, do I need to get into contact with Visa, MasterCard, and all these credit cards in order to get the permission to have them on my website, or how does this function? Okay, with PayPal, it avoids all of the Visa, MasterCard, whatever, because they process it for you through Visa, MasterCard. That's why I like them for newbies, because you don't have to go get a merchant yeah. account. You don't have to do anything. Um, and I think I'm going to see if I've got a video on a PayPal button, because I know I have created PayPal buy button videos before. Um, I'm going to do a little search here really fast. Um, I'm looking on my other computer. one in there. Um, well, let me just show you real fast. We got mm -hmm. um, um, now 
possible that your PayPal may look different than mine because I've got mine set to the old format, and I don't know if they'll let you do that or not. But what you're going to try to find is merchant services, wherever that may be on your uh, mm -hmm. on your on your dashboard on PayPal. And yours, like I said, it could look different than mine. And then you just create a PayPal button for your website. Um, if it's a subscription, something that needs to be billed over and over and over again, you would use that. If it's a buy now, you know, you know, just a one-time payment, you'd use a buy now. Um, add to cart works well if you've got products where they're going to buy about multiple products and you want to keep loading them into a cart. Um, Now, if you need to send them, charge them variable amounts, the automatic billing one um, is something you could use. And I guess they must have an installment plan, and one I haven't used that. So let's just the basic one you're going to use would be a buy now button. So let's go with that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just buy now. You give it a name. My product. If you want to give it an item ID, you can. Sometimes I give it some kind of code so I know, okay, how to create a virtual product. Um, 315 would be March 5th of 2015 or something. I might give it a code so I know which class they took, okay. And then um, if you want to customize the button, you can. You can add... Um, extra stuff, but you're probably not going to need to do that. So let's just put the price on us. Now that's for shipping. We're not going to do shipping, okay? If you had tax, mm -hmm. you could add your tax rate in. Not going to worry about that. Uh, just use their secure merchant account ID. Okay, and down in the customize, um, you could let them puts instructions or whatever like that. But what I want to show you here is take the customer to this URL when they cancel their checkout. So let's take a look at an example of this. Uh, okay, so there's my sales page. What I would do is give them my sales page URL, URL right there. If they cancel, it takes them back to the sales page. Now, if they actually right. finish, pardon me. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just okay. confirming. Okay, and if they can't, if they successfully buy, then okay. So that's my thank you page for this program that y'all are in. So I'd give them that. So if the customer's um, URL that they get when they finish checkout, that would be it. And then it, you do create a button. And this code is what you're going to use. You just you know select it, right-click, and copy it. And that is going to go on your sales page down at the bottom. Just paste it, like, like copy-paste on the sales page? Just copy-paste? Yeah, you'll have to copy it at a code level and not just, um, for example, let me go to my, let's say I was using WordPress. So let's say I'm creating a, a page that's my sales page. All right. Right now, see if I was in visual mode, it looks like this, and you could say uh, headline, copy, sell price. You know, and then you want the thing. Okay, but if you copy that here, that's not going to look right. Normally, you're in visual mode. It, it won't. See, like if I preview that page, it's going to look like that, okay? So yes. what you have to do is you have to go to text. Let's get all of that junk out of the way, okay? 
you go into the text thing and then you paste it there and um, then when you go back to visual and preview that it looks more like that mm -hmm. and then when they go to the buy now it here's how it works it'll take them off to PayPal to buy and log in right just make sure you're in the the text version on that. Thank you. Okay, so I don't want to save that. Okay, so you got it? Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. All right, does anybody else have any other questions? Um, okay. Anybody else got any questions? So are you going to make a video of this for us? Well, all of this is going into a video, so yeah. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me go back to... All right, so here's your checklist. Um, you're going to fill in that handout I gave you. Um, you're going to have your thank you page. You create it first. Then you create the autoresponder campaign with the thank you email. Then you create your sales page, and you create your buy button. And then you put your buy button on the page. And if you are doing the one with the PayPal thing, don't forget you got to have that extra little page to get them to sign up to your list. And just so you know, if you if you want to keep the momentum going, I'm doing another momentum circle starts Monday. Um, so if you wanted ongoing tech help with uh, implementing what we've talked about in here, or you want strategy or planning or marketing advice or you know continued help with your product development, uh, if you want a masterminding environment, you might want to. Uh, or also I'm doing um, energy shifting stuff in there if you want it, if you're into that kind of thing. If you're, like if you're feeling stuck or whatever, I've got the energy shifting way to keep you going with your momentum on that. And um, what they're set up as is I have six people in a group and we I meet with you one time to map out what you want to accomplish in the next 90 days. And we create a written plan for what you're going to do step by step. And then we... Um, you, you check in in a group setting twice a month with these other five people, or it may not be five, you know, how many ever I've got in there, the most I have is six in a group. And um, you can brainstorm with those other people and you get a chance to say what you've done. And we always compare it back to your, your plan to see where you are, see what needs to be tweaked, see what you've accomplished. So it's holding you accountable and you've got the masterminding. Um, Judy was in my last one and... She just recorded her preview presentation last night. I'm so proud of her. She did such a fantastic job. So I don't know, Judy, if you want to you tell them about what you accomplished. <laughs> oh, my God. To brag. Wonderful. <laughs> it was absolutely wonderful. You all heard how scared I was yesterday. And um, Marnie asked me good questions and um, rolled with me, and she just knew exactly where to go and... Um, she filled in the gaps that I forgot to fill in, and now it's just exactly what I would have wanted, and regardless of what I do um, with the program, for me, it was telling my story that I've been so afraid to tell, and it yeah. leaves a legacy, <clears throat> so we definitely did the story method, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for this, and um, I feel empowered. And when Marnie's talking about the momentum circles, that is a big part of keeping me connected to her. And I guess we'll get together and map out the next ninety days so that the um, the preview call that we did last night doesn't just sit 
on my computer <laughs> and make me feel good about finally breaking through telling my story, but it actually goes out to um, my audience. So if anybody's considering wanting somebody to connect with for the next 90 days in an extremely productive way, I would highly recommend the Momentum Circle. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just a tickle pink with how that turned out. I thought you did so wonderful. I sent it straight over to Lisa because I, I, she's like, do you think she'll mind if I listen to it? I was like, no, she's going to give it away. She's, this is what she's giving away. So she was just, oh, this is wonderful. This is so great. She's so, I don't know, did she send you an email? She said she was going to send you one. She did. And what's so interesting about that is she is the reason that I was connected with you in the first place because when I signed up for her Step Into Destiny course that you were recommending, she gave you as a bonus. Mm. And um, just think how that opened up my life to be, for you to be that bonus. And I guess that was one or two years ago. Um, so she was the perfect person because she also knew me she knew my story, she knew my personality, she knew my strengths and weaknesses, my destiny labels, and um, so I was totally blessed that you invited her to be a part of it. Plus, I got a testimonial from her. I mean, oh. I've cut and pasted her, her message to me, and I'll ask her permission to use it as a testimonial, but that was instant verification of it so it was just it was just perfect and I thank you and thank this group for letting me <laughs> do it yesterday and just to take one more second um, when I was doing my uh, blessing journaling last night I realized that yesterday was the exact day that I needed that review on doing a webinar call because that night was when we did it. Now, I mean, if that isn't a God thing, um, <laughs> how do you get a more perfect match than that? <laughs> <laughs> it did work out well, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I will mention, I mean, this is not a, a bonus. that I, I need to add it to my sales page for, like, this product creation training. But so you all know, if I have room and future uh, versions of the product creation um, I let people audit so like Judy's been through this before so she's auditing Susan's been through it before so she's auditing so if you um, it I just seems like people as they're creating products and things they have new questions that come up as they're further along that and it's a good way for them you know if you want to hop on, on a future one and I have space you know, just ask me if you see that I'm doing one and say, do you have any room left? And uh, I usually have room for, you know, one or two people or something in a momentum circle. So, or not a momentum circle, um, the product creation class. So, okay. Um, any questions on anything we've covered before we wrap up? Okay. Uh, Marnie, just a quick question uh, concerning housekeeping. <laughs> yeah. Is there, yeah, is there a way that um, I tried downloading your MP3 version, but I couldn't. I want to get them on my computer. Is there a way that we can download the MP3 to our computer? Uh, you mean for all of them you had trouble or just I didn't do one for yesterday. I think I got in a hurry, but are you just saying you didn't get one for yesterday or you never can get them? I tried I tried the first two, but I couldn't succeed. Okay, let me show you what to do. Um, what do you what web browser do you mm -hmm. use? Uh, Chrome. Google Chrome. Okay, all right. All right, so if um, Let's just say we go to the recordings. Okay, so the link there, right click on it and click Save Link As. 
and it will ask you where you're going to save the, the MP3. Just pay attention where you're saving it and hit save. Right. Great. Yeah, so right click, save link as. Clear, yeah, clear. And another thing that I want to ask is that, um, because I'm also planning to deliver my product as a, uh, like, like live, like um, several modules, and I'm going to use maybe freeconferencing.com. I'm going to record each session. Is there a way that I can make a zip file from all the recordings, from every handout, from everything that went on during the training? Like a one zip download. So when they hit the PayPal button, they get the one click download for the, per for the people that want to get the recorded version of the seminar only. Uh, you need to use something like WinZip or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't know if that's standard on a computer now or not. Um, let me see if I took. Let me just say I took some files here and go right click and. Um, Let me try something different. Let's see. Send to compressed zip folder. Right. So I just mark um, whatever I want to mark, like and then I just go to send, send to compress zip folder and they're going to be made like a one, one click download document. Yeah, it should create a, a zip file, zip folder, and then you would upload that folder. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, if not, um, in the meantime, what I want you to do is work on your sales page and and bring me or email me ahead of time if you can what you've got and we'll go through it we'll work on your headlines or your benefits or whatever you want to work on and we'll look over your sales pages so I will let y'all go for now and have fun with it talk soon thank you thank you